Seriously, Aunt Chloe? How does it feel to rely on my parents for support? Living your best life in comfy attire, glued to your computer in your room all day? And come on, you're what, 35? No husband, no kids. It's like you're a burden on society. Hold up, Beverly. What's going on here? I'm just wondering how you can live like this. Aren't you ashamed? Well, no. What's bothering you? The problem is you're depending on my parents and me. Do you realize you bring a negative vibe to our family? You're draining, irritating, and honestly, just a waste of space. And on top of that, there's this unpleasant odor lingering around you. Beverly, what's with this sudden hostility? I haven't done anything to deserve this. Why are you talking to me like this? You haven't done anything? Really? Imagine being a senior, planning my future, discussing college with my guidance counselor, and then coming home to an adult who's not making any effort right under the same roof. How do you think that affects me? I think you're exaggerating a bit. I fail to see how my lifestyle impacts your studies. Maybe I'll end up like you. Do you consider yourself a suitable role model for young women? No job, no place of your own, and nothing to your name? It's like life can go so wrong for some people. I'm content with my life, and I do work, Beverly. Ugh, no, you don't work. That's why you can't afford rent and have to rely on my parents. It's one thing to ask for help, but not even trying to improve your situation makes you a scumbag. Look, Beverly, I don't appreciate the language. Why would you think I don't work? Mom told me. She said you tried working at a big office but couldn't handle it and quit years ago. Anxiety is a terrible excuse. Everyone experiences anxiety, but they overcome it. You're just lazy because my parents enable you. Your mom said that. What was she thinking? Okay, that's enough. Work from home as a web designer, Beverly. It's essentially the same work as I used to do at the advertising firm. But now I can do it remotely from my room. And anxiety is not an excuse. Actually, I've been doing quite well since I left my previous job. Right. Working online. That's the excuse of the lazy people. You can call yourself whatever you want, can't you? But it's time for you to get a real job. Get out and keep searching until you find a job. You're so lazy. So you don't believe me? Anyway, I don't know what to tell you, but you don't need to watch your language. I'm your aunt. You weren't like that when you were little. Trash talk isn't very attractive. What's the problem? I'm just speaking truthfully here. And honestly, I have no idea what my parents were thinking about letting you stay. Mom was all like, your Aunt Chloe is going through a tough time and it's important we support her as a family and let her heal. Yeah, right. You're freaking 35. Move on. Get out and get a life. Otherwise, what's the point? You should just give up and disappear. Beverly, I don't know what's going on with your teenage mind, but you have no right to talk to me like that. If you're so concerned about your future and college, why don't you focus on studying? I would if I didn't have a big piece of garbage like you distracting me. You're going to affect my grades. Don't blame me for your grades. I've had enough of this attitude from you. You need to understand that you've overstayed your welcome and are a negative presence in our house. What do you mean? Get out. Move out of my house today. We don't want you here. Oh, all right. Fine. What? You're actually moving out? Yes. Wow. Thanks. I'm glad I spoke up. That was easy. Well, you didn't leave me with much choice. I don't want to live under the same roof as a hostile niece. Whatever. 
You're moving out. Finally. Goodbye forever. Okay, Beverly. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Mary, can I talk to you? I'm considering taking a short break and going somewhere warm. Maybe to a beach destination. Oh, Chloe, that's unexpected. Is there a specific reason for this sudden urge to go on an adventure? Well, your daughter Beverly recently lashed out at me, calling me names like garbage and accusing me of leeching off your family. I'm curious where she would get such ideas. She even had the audacity to deny that I work from home. Do you have any insight into why she might have that impression, Mary? Oh, I apologize for Beverly's behavior. She's been quite on edge lately due to the stress of the college application process. I know that, but why would she think that I don't work and that you and Thomas are supporting me? Mary, what's going on? I'm sorry about that too. Beverly has been difficult lately. And while I didn't want to further burden her with the financial situation our family is facing, she has bigger concerns to worry about. When she asked me why you were living with us, I simply said the first thing that came to mind. So the first thing that came to your mind was to portray me as a lazy moocher who hasn't bothered to look for a job in two years? Couldn't you have come up with a better explanation? She genuinely believes I'm a complete failure, and she hurled every insult she could think of at me. I mean, we were rebellious as teenagers, but this is on another level. Beverly is going through a lot right now. I'm sure she will calm down eventually. This went beyond what I can tolerate in my own home. Remember, this is my house, right? I allowed you to stay here because Thomas lost his job due to the pandemic. But it's been almost two years now, hasn't it? And he hasn't found a single job. It's hard for me to believe. It's not that he hasn't found any job. It's that he hasn't found the right job. He's a highly qualified individual. We have to be careful about what he chooses to dedicate himself to. He needs something that motivates him. At this point, money should be motivation enough. Don't you think it's reasonable to expect him to have worked in two years? He's working on it. You know, we're in a recession and it's challenging to find a good employment. Yes, but isn't having any job better than having no job? Anyway, I was understanding of your situation and I don't mind helping you guys out for a while, but with Beverly's behavior, she's practically suggested that I would be better off dead. I apologize, Chloe. I will talk to her about it. You need to fix this. Have a conversation with Beverly while I'm away and explain the truth to her that I do work. This is my house. You and Thomas are the ones living here without paying rent. She needs to change your attitude with the time of return or you will all have to find somewhere else to live. What? You're kicking us out? If Beverly continues to behave this way, yes. She was completely unhinged, Mary. Who knows what she might do next? I don't need this kind of drama, especially when all I was trying to do was help my sister and her family. Okay, okay. I will tell Beverly the truth. Ten days. I'm giving you exactly ten days to rectify your false story and address your daughter's bratty behavior. If not, you're out. Understood? Okay, Chloe. Seriously? Shut up, you pathetic loser. We're trying to be productive here. I'm studying, so stop making so much noise and get the hell out of here. Ugh, Beverly, my key isn't working. Can you please come down and open the door for me? No way. We don't allow freeloaders. You're not getting in, so just give up and leave already. What? Beverly? Didn't your mother talk to you about me? You were supposed to change your attitude. Uh... 
All I know is that we finally managed to get you out of the house. There's no way I'm letting you back in. Besides, Mom told me that she's had enough of you too. She changed the locks so you can't come back in. You better leave before the neighbors mistake you for a burglar and call the police, you worthless aunt. Your mom actually told you that? Yeah, she's done supporting her lazy older sister, okay? So just get out of here. You're trespassing, you vagabond. I can't believe this. Your mom promised she'd talk to you. Well, she probably changed her mind. You know how you are, always causing problems. I'm not letting you ruin this for us. Beverly, open the door now. Right now, I have no place to go. That's not my problem. Maybe you should have thought about that before mooching off of us. I'm not a freeloader. I just needed some time to get back on my feet. Time's up, Aunt Chloe. We're done dealing with your drama. Just leave. I can't believe your mom would do this. I thought family was supposed to support each other. Well, she's done supporting you. And honestly, I can't blame her. You're a burden. This is heartless, Beverly. You're my niece, and you're treating me like a criminal. You brought this on yourself. Now leave before I call the cops. Mary, what on earth is happening here? Beverly still believes I'm a freeloader, and you changed the locks on me. What's wrong? Hey, Chloe. I contemplated talking to Beverly. But it's just not going to work. It's much easier for you to leave. So I decided we're going to live here and you can go and Beverly won't suspect a thing. It all works out. Are you kidding me? This is my house. Open the door right now. No, I'm sorry. But this is how it's going to be. This house holds our childhood memories. I have every right to be here. What? The house was left to me as an inheritance. I even had it renovated. You think you can just change the locks and kick me out? Mary, this is not a joke. You better let me in immediately. You know, my friend shared something interesting the other day. She's going through a messy divorce with her husband and things are really bad. They fight all the time and they have a child together. They used to live in a house downtown but the husband left. Here's the interesting part. The lawyer mentioned that now, the husband can't enter the house without her permission. If he does, it would be considered breaking and entering. Okay, so? The same logic applies here, doesn't it? You left, you abandoned the house. So we are the ones living here now. If you enter the house, it would be considered breaking and entering. Which means, we are the rightful homeowners, right? This is our property now. You can find somewhere else to go. What? You're serious? You're just gonna take over my house? Should I call the authorities for trespassing? Oh, that's a good one, Chloe. Well, bye. Have a good life. Thanks for the house. Shut up, Mary. I'm warning you. Stop this nonsense before I take these matters into my own hands. Mm, I'm so scared. LOL. What are you going to do? You can't even step foot inside the house. I packed up all your belongings and placed them on the back porch. You can collect them and leave. You better find another place to stay. Go away. Well, I'm glad I sold the house so swiftly. It was a smart move. What? I sold the house. The paperwork is all signed and the new owners will be arriving soon to move in. What are you talking about? You can't sell this house. Why not? It's my house. I can do whatever I want. It's a good thing you already packed my stuff. I'll take them and move into my new place. You better find a new place as soon as possible. The owners will involve the police if you're still occupying their house. How are we supposed to move out? Besides, 
You said we had 10 days to talk to Beverly. You've already sold the house. This is insane. Oh, the first thing you said to Beverly after I left was, great job getting rid of the freeloader? Huh, you never intended to tell her the truth, did you? You even celebrated my departure? You're completely out of your mind, Mary. How, how did you know that? I bugged the place. I planted listening devices all over the house before I left. I know everything. Everything? Calling the locksmith to change the locks just minutes after I left? And I heard you bragging to your friends about finally having your own house? Pathetic. That's so disgusting. You were eavesdropping on us? What's wrong with you now? No, what the hell is wrong with you? Trying to screw me over after everything I did for you guys? Anyway, after I discovered your deceit, I left and decided to sell the house. I'm living freely now, doing what I want, where I want, and yes, without any freeloaders. It went incredibly smoothly. I couldn't believe it. So that's the end of that. You have five days to get out of here. Five days? Chloe, you know we can't do that. If we had the means to live on our own, we wouldn't have asked for your help in the first place. What are we supposed to do? You're just going to throw us out onto the street? You should have thought about that before lying to your arrogant daughter and plotting to steal my house. The game is up, Mary. Get out of the other house. You have five days. After that, the police will handle the situation. Aunt Chloe, why won't you take me in? I'm your niece. How can you do this to me? What's going on, Beverly? What do you want? Aunt Chloe, please allow me to come back and stay with you. This new place we moved to is awful. I had no idea the old house belonged to you. Mom deceived me. I genuinely believed that you were just, you know, crashing at her place without owning it. So it's not my fault. Can't you see that? You want to move in with me? Yes, Aunt Chloe. This apartment complex is unlivable. There are cockroaches everywhere. It's noisy, and the hallways reek of weed. I can't concentrate here. If I don't leave soon, my chances of getting into college will be ruined. It's a big complex, right? Many families live there. I'm sure you and your parents can find a way to make it work. I don't think so. Dad doesn't have a job. And I overheard mom saying, we don't even have enough money for groceries. Don't you feel sorry for me, Aunt Chloe? Now I'm being punished for believing what my parents told me. It's just not fair. So you believe I should forgive everything because you didn't know I owned the house or had a job? Yeah? How was I supposed to know? I'm just a teenager. I trust my parents when they tell me something. Trusting something to be true doesn't justify mistreating people. Calling me hurtful names and insulting me wasn't right. You intentionally tried to hurt me, didn't you? I didn't mean it. I had no idea you were doing so well. Now I'm talking to my guidance counselor about my future, and I think I could learn a lot from you. You're independent, a homeowner, and you run your own business online. That's impressive. It's too late for that, Beverly. I'm surprised you can change your attitude so suddenly. But I can't just forget what happened. Aunt Chloe, it's not fair. I don't deserve this. If I can't study well for the SATs, I might not get into college at all. Wouldn't you feel terrible if that happened? No, not really. In fact, I'd say it's futile to blame everything and everyone else for your academic struggles. Stop blaming me for your inability to study and stop blaming your parents for behaving poorly towards me. If you want to succeed, you need to work hard and take responsibility for your own life. Are you really going to abandon me? I'm a victim here too. Beverly, you're not a victim. 
Stop making excuses and start taking charge of your life. If you want a better future, you have to make an effort. Blaming others won't get you anywhere. Good luck. Chloe, please. I need your help. I'm sorry about everything. Can we come back to live with you? I promise I'll do anything. Mary? I thought I made it clear not to contact me. What's happening? Beverly has gone crazy ever since she found out the truth about you. She's become impossible to deal with. She won't talk to us, won't eat with us. And she even broke some furniture in the house. If the landlord finds out, we'll get kicked out. We can't live like this. Please, Chloe, let us move in with you. I heard you had a nice place. Yeah, I do have a condo overlooking the beach. It's lovely and I love it. But Beverly's issues are not my responsibility. I don't see why you thought reaching out to me would help. We're sisters. Despite our fight, we love each other, right? You won't let us suffer in this terrible place. Once we settle at your place and Thomas finds a job, we'll be back on our feet. Please, Chloe, consider it. No, I'm done helping you and your ungrateful, self-centered family. This place is for me, and I won't share it. Is that fair? You're in a luxury condo, and we live in a cockroach-infested hole in the wall. Seriously, Chloe? No decent person would treat the family this way. What would mom and dad say? Decent person, huh? By the way, I know about Bob. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Bob, the guy you're cheating on Thomas with? Those listening devices I installed were a great investment. I know all about your affair, Mary. Bringing your boy toy into my house? Unacceptable. Oh my gosh. I can't believe you know about that. It doesn't mean anything. He's just a guy I met at the gym. It's just stress relief, you know. You're not going to tell Thomas, are you? I don't know. Maybe I should tell him what his wife is doing behind his back. He deserves to know, right? No. Bob doesn't mean anything. I don't want a divorce. I won't ruin my family over this. I was just blowing off steam. Please, Chloe, don't tell Thomas. I don't want to hurt him. Hmm. But then you shouldn't have cheated on him, huh? But fine. You know what? I want in return for not telling Thomas, right? Yes, I understand. You want me to cut off contact with you? I want you to never contact me again. And who's the moocher again? We are. Thomas and I were the moochers. I'm sorry, Chloe. Please, don't tell him. Well, now we've got that clear. Goodbye, Mary. Having severed all ties with my sister's family, my life has transformed into a dreamlike existence. I now reside in a beautiful and tranquil apartment, free from any disturbances or dependencies. My professional endeavors have flourished, bringing me newfound success. Meanwhile, my sister's family grapples with internal strife, with her husband discovering her secret lover and enduring a constant sense of inadequacy. The household is rife with conflicts. My niece Beverly, failing to secure a spot in college, opted for a modest rental and now works at a convenience store to make ends meet. Yet I've relinquished any concern for their affairs. My sole focus is on diligently working and crafting a life of my own.